Philip Klosbaugh, Research Associate, Department of Atmospheric Science with Colorado State University. I am proud to introduce Dr. William Gray. Thank you very much, Linda. I'm glad to come back again. I've got a young cohort here, Phil Klosbaugh, who tries to keep me honest and is now putting more effort into the forecast than I am. But I'm involved with a lot of things related to hurricanes besides the actual forecast. I've really been amazed at some of the things that have been said about hurricanes the last couple of years and global warming and how these hurricanes are a result of global warming and we may be partly responsible for it, for the fossil fuels we burn and all those sorts of things. And I think that's grossly exaggerated. I'm old enough to have been around in the 1940s and 50s when we had a lot of storms around Florida and the south, southeast and the east coast. And then there was a period about the middle 60s where things, the number of major storms and landfall seemed to go down. And this downward trend continued for a long time to two years ago, 2004. And now we've had these two terrible years and I think that this is how nature works. This is the way things tend to go. And we must interpret these in that sense. I've been saying a number of years, and before me, Neil Frank and Bob Sheets and all, Max Mayfield has been saying that we're going to see hurricane damage like we've never previously seen it. Not that the storms will be more frequent or more intense, but there's been such a buildup of people along the U.S. southeast coast since the last active period of the 1940s through middle 1960s. And however, we were very lucky because we got into this new era for major storms in 1995. The last 11 years, all but two have been very active years. And they're no more active in general or not basically different than what we had in the 1940s and 50s. However, the population, what's in harm's way and so on, has really changed. And I think that should be our concern. We should be worried about nature as it usually manifests itself and not worried about global warming. Yes, there's been global warming the last 30 years, but we have no theory why that should alter global tropical cyclone activity or intensity. But the Atlantic is a special region. It goes through these multi-decadal cycles, which is natural due to the ocean circulation changes in the Atlantic, the so-called thermohaline circulation. So I'd like to show you a few pictures here, and then I would like to call on my very talented colleague, Phil Flotsblatt, to come up to you and discuss what's likely to happen for the 2006 season. Now, I want to talk a little bit about global warming. Here's sort of a graph of the blue line is of the global ocean temperature changes. And you see that it's fluctuated. Sometimes global ocean temperature goes up. Sometimes it goes down. And you can see that 
In the last 30 years, if you can read that up to 2005, we've had 30 years of the mean temperature of the ocean going up from about 1995, 1975 up to the present time. Now, what people are doing is extrapolating this into the future. We've always extrapolated. Now, I was a boy growing up in Washington, D.C. in the early 1940s, and I remember that we had this tremendous warming in the globe from 1910 to 1940. And there were all kinds of people talking about, although we will likely win the Second World War, we're going to have a dust bowl, and all these things are going to happen. And what was happening, they were extrapolating this forward. Well, what happened? This didn't happen. About the middle 40s, the globe began a weak cooling period here. And what happened then? Uh, anyways, here was sort of the view of things in the middle 40s. The globe is getting warmer. And what's going to happen? Is it going to keep getting warmer? There's going to be all kinds of problems. And uh, But you see, it didn't get warmer. It started to get colder. And what happened then when it got colder? The Ice Age people came out. Of course, you remember that. And we're going into the next Ice Age. We've got to be careful about this. And, of course, what were they doing? They were extrapolating this curve, you know, just like weather, like the stock market. The stock's going up, you keep buying it. Uh, but usually it doesn't keep going up, and uh, so on. Anyways, this, we were, they were extrapolating this curve here to get colder. Now, what happened in the middle 70s? It stopped getting colder, it started getting warmer, and we're up to here now. So, what are we seeing? We're seeing this. About three weeks ago, time ran this uh, article. Now, of course, papers like to... Uh, Dramatize things. Say things are terrible. The earth is coming to an end. We've always had those. So what, and uh, reporters are out. What do they want to do? They all want to win Pulitzer Prizes. So what do you do? You send people to places around the globe where the ice is melted. And of course, and then interview the local people and they say things are changed. They've never been this way. Well, of course, the Arctic is melting a bit, the glaciers are melting a bit, but they ought to because the globe has been warming and they were melting in the late 30s too. So uh, anyways, here's some of the things if you remember science, uh, 15 days you enter the area where you've got to bring in energy. You've got to look at the energy difference between air, sea, cloud, cloud free, uh, condensation, warming, evaporation, cooling, all these things. It's a can of worms. Here's an illustration of it like that. Now, there's no way you can write code that, that get in and for all these processes, you cannot uh, uh, write code that will realistically prog all these processes in tens and hundreds of thousands of time steps into the future. Little errors grow exponentially. So I think climate prediction is, uh, as it is done with initial value methods, just hasn't been, we can't trust it. It just isn't good. And they're all saying about the same thing. With, if we double uh, agree, the human-induced greenhouse gases, we're going to warm the globe 2 to 5 degrees uh, uh, Celsius. And uh, I think that's grossly exaggerated. I think, yes, the globe will warm something, but not near that. Maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 degrees Celsius, but not near as much. I won't go into this, this, his paper will be published in a week or two. But in general, he doesn't find that. He doesn't find this, even though the globe has been warming the last 30 years. We have no theory of why small warming of the globe like we've seen the last 30 years, or, and, or if it has been cooling when the globe was cooling from 19, uh, 
45 to 75. We have no theory of why global tropical storms should get worse or less frequent or so on. There is no theory for it. We don't observe anything. 